All right, we're going to look at a couple of examples of uh, mathematical induction. Um, so we're going to we're going to make this uh, try to make this simple. Um, we say p of n is a statement about the natural numbers. What we want to do is we want to show that for n equals one, that's called the base case. We want to show that that whatever formula it is, it's true for for n equals one. The induction hypothesis is, as we go down the line, we get to the kth domino, and we assume that the kth domino falls. We show that the first domino falls, then we got to assume that if the, sec if the kth domino falls, it's got to knock over the next one, k plus 1. If we can show that the k plus 1 falls down also, then we show that the first one gets going, if the kth one falls, then the next one's going to fall. So um, that's what that's what our goal is for uh, mathematical induction. So we're going to show, uh, I think it was about four uh, summation formulas that we had for uh, doing the upper lower sums and Riemann sums to, to kind of make the things go by a little bit nicer. Okay. So uh, the first claim we're going to look at is, um, we're just going to call it PN, and that's this the sum of i equals 1 to n of i is going to be equal to n n plus 1 over 2. And what this formula is doing is it's just saying 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus blah 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 plus n. So we're just adding up the first n uh, natural numbers. So what we're going to do first is we got to show that this is true for just adding up the first uh, number which is just going to be 1. So the sum from 1 to 1 of i is just going to be 1 and that is in fact equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2. Okay. So our base case is true and we're going to make our induction hypothesis and we're going to assume this is true for uh, k. Okay. So we're going to suppose that um, the sum, or I'm going to call it p of k, I won't say p of k every time afterwards, uh, sum equals 1 to k, so we're adding up the first k integers. Okay, let's put our i in a little bit more distinct there. And we're going to uh, suppose that that's k, k plus 1, uh, all over 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to consider the uh, k plus 1, and that's going to be the sum from i equals 1 to k plus 1 of i. And using a property of summation, we can say this is the sum i equals 1 to k. So there's the first k. And then the last one would just be adding k plus 1. Now that sum there, we can rewrite that as um, k k plus 1 over 2 by our induction hypothesis. This is our induction hypothesis up here. Um, all over 2 and then get a common denominator so then we'd have 2 and then times k plus 1 all over 2. Now they have a common denominator and they also have a k plus 1 in common so we're going to factor a k plus 1 out. So what is left is the k and the 2 so we get uh, k plus 2 there, okay, all over 2, and that actually proves um, what we wanted to show. So for the k plus 1, if we go back and we look at this, here's the k, so if it's going to be k plus 1, I should have a k plus 1 here, which I do, and if I have a k here, I should have k plus 1 here, so if I have k plus 1 here, I should have k plus 1 plus 1 or k plus 2 here, and in fact I do have that. So this uh, shows that this uh, summation formula is true for all uh, positive uh, integers or the natural numbers. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, next one which was to add up the squares, so the adding up the first n squares. So the claim is that um, if I add up all the squares, so 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus blah 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 plus n squared, it's going to end up being this formula here, n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, uh, all over 6. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can do that. 
So first thing we got to do is show that, oh, well, it's actually true for just, just one. So we'll go ahead and we'll look at that. So adding up just the first square, well, one squared is just one. And um, is that actually equal to one times one plus one over two times one? And the answer is yes, because you have one times two times three, which is six over six. So that's true. So our base case is true. Now what we want to do is we want to sh show that this is true for um, the first k uh, squares. So k i equals one to k of i squared. So we're going to assume that that's going to be k, k plus one, and then two k plus one. all over 2. And when we're all done, wherever you see a K, when we're doing the next one, all those Ks, we want to have those be K plus 1's. If we can get there, then we've, we've proved this. Okay, So this is just going to be a little bit of algebra. Um, so we're going to consider the um, sum I equals 1 to uh, K plus 1 of I squared and what we're going to do is the same thing we've done before is we're going to break it up um, as the sum of the first k squares and then just the last one which would be k plus one squared so on that summation there I can go ahead and, and use my uh, induction hypothesis which will be k k plus one two k plus one all over six and uh, we're going to have a common denominator of six so we will rewrite the other one as six k plus one squared over six okay then what we have is a uh, common denominator and then we also have a GCF of a k plus one so we're gonna we're gonna factor out a k plus one there okay so then from the first fraction we'll have k times 2k which will be 2k squared plus k times one which will be k plus the second fraction 6 times k is 6k and 6 times 1 is 6 okay so we're out of real estate and what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and write this on the next uh, page here so there it is what we're going to do is we're going to work the uh, the stuff out and and uh, combine our like terms and then factor it so we have k plus 1 and then 2k squared plus 7k plus 6 all over 6 and so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and, and uh, factor so we got k plus 1 and then we have k plus 2 and then 2k plus 3 all over 6. So that's what it factors into. Now, originally it was a k. If it's going to be true, it should be a k plus 1 in that place. And then it was k plus 1. So now instead of k, we have k plus 1 plus 1. And then it was 2k plus 1. So it should be 2 and then in place of the k, a k plus 1 uh, plus 3. So that does in fact fit the form that we wanted. I'm sorry, not plus 3 plus 1. So that looks like k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1, all over 6. But if we're doing k plus 1, here, here, and here should be the k plus 1s, which we do have right there. So that does show that this, this is true. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and look at the i cubes. I think the i cubed one is easier than this one. Uh, you don't have to do as much uh, expanding out and uh, factoring. Okay. So claim... Uh, well, Pn will be the statement that the sum of i equals 1 to n of i cubed, so that's 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus blah 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 n cubed is going to be the formula n uh, squared times uh, n plus 1 squared all over 4. So that's, that's our claim here. So it's going to be n squared n plus 1 squared all over 4. All right, so again, we got to show this is true for uh, i equals 1. So just what, what is 1 cubed? That's going to be 1. So does that fit the formula? Well, we got um, 
1 squared is 1, 1 plus 1 squared is going to be 4, and then divide by 4, that's going to be 1. So that's good. So we got that, we got that base case uh, true. Now we'll suppose that for k, we have this, this to be true. So we have i equals 1 to k of i cubed. We're going to suppose that's k squared. Uh, k plus 1 squared all over 4. And what we want to do is, when we're all done, it should look like this. Instead of a, of a, a k squared, we'll have a k plus 1 squared. Instead of a k plus 1, we'll have a k plus 1, <coughs> excuse me, k plus 1 plus 1, or just k plus 2 squared all over 4. <coughs> excuse me. So that's what we want to uh, get to here. Um, so let's go ahead and look at our base case. I mean, not our base case, our, um, our k plus 1 uh, case here. So we're going to consider the sum i equals 1 to k plus 1. Cubed, and then we're going to go ahead and re rewrite again as the first k terms. So property of uh, finite summations, i equals 1 to k of i cubed, and then the last term, which will be k plus 1 uh, cubed. All right. So we can go ahead and replace this one with that by the induction hypothesis, and then it's going to have a denominator of 4, so we're going to want to multiply this one by uh, 4 over 4 so that we have a common denominator. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so applying your formula, k squared, k plus 1 squared, all over uh, 4. And then we were adding k plus 1 to the third, but we need common denominators, so we're going to uh, multiply by 4 over 4. And what we got going on here is we got a greatest common factor of uh, k plus 1 squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor that out because we all have a common denominator. So factor out a k plus 1 squared. And what we got left over is k squared from the first fraction and then plus uh, 4 times one more k plus 1 factor. So that will give us 4k plus 4. And then that's going to be all over 4. So that becomes k plus 1 squared, and then we'll go ahead and factor the stuff in the brackets, and that'll be k plus 2 quantity squared, all over 4. And if we wanted to rewrite it, it should be, instead of k, we'll have k plus 1 squared, and instead of uh, k plus 1, we'll have k plus 1 plus 1 squared all over 4. So that does show that this this uh, this uh, formula holds true for, for uh, all, all uh, positive integers. There's one other one that um, I skipped over. It's, it's an easy one, but um, let's go ahead and look at this one as well. We'll just tack it on on the end here. Um, so the claim here is um, P of n is going to be the statement that if I add up the constant number c n times, it's just going to be c times n. So, for example, if c was, you know, 5 or whatever, it would just be like 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus blah, 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 plus 5. And how many times? That would be n times. So, that's just 5 times n. All right, so we'll go ahead and do this one with uh, uh, induction proof anyways. Okay, so for our proof, we got to show it's true for just adding up the constant ones. So i equals 1 to 1 of c is just c, and that's c times 1, so that's good. Now we're going to suppose for um, k, i equals 1 to k, so we're adding up c k times. We're going to suppose that that is c times k. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and we're going to consider... Uh, what if we add up c k plus 1 times? So we're going to employ the same trick that we've done on all the other proofs, is we're going to rewrite this as i equals 1 to k of c. So that's adding up c k times, and then plus that one more c. Well, by the induction hypothesis, that summation will become c k, and we have one more c left over. Factor out your greatest common factor of c, 
and then I'll be uh, k plus 1. Okay, so um, there is all your uh, induction proofs for those uh, summation properties. Um, so we'll be using those in upper and lower sum uh, formulas and also Riemann sums. Um, if you continue taking more math, you'll, you'll see more induction proofs, especially if you start taking upper division math.